Rayad Fazani is the CEO of BP Solar. Uh, he's been with BP for 20 years. BP Solar is the largest of BP's renewable energy businesses with 2,000 employees in 10 countries, uh, several of which uh, Rayad has visited just in the past week, I think. Today, I'd like to talk about the attractive fundamentals of clean energy, BP's wind and solar business, the challenges we face, and what it takes to deliver a unique opportunity. Viewed from where I sit in BP's global alternative energy and conventional energy business, there has never been a time when investment in energy, clean or otherwise, holds so much promise. Of course, the skeptics would say, why so? And the answer is that the long-term fundamentals, of, even at an oil price of $42 per barrel, remain very strong. Four things haven't changed. The people of the world continue to demand more and more energy to fulfill their needs and desires for economic betterment. They are growing in numbers and over time in prosperity, whether it's at the bottom, the middle, or the top of the pyramid. Consumers want energy delivered safely, reliably, economically, and with no damage to the environment. Environment, in the broadest sense, not just greenhouse gas emissions and climate change impacts. And thirdly, energy consumers demand choice and a diverse mix to match their specific need. And finally, the fact remains that the energy investment cycle is measured over a run of years, not quarters, because it involves long-run drivers such as infrastructure, technology development, building plant and machinery, and developing people capability. Investment in clean energy has reached the point where it can no longer regress. Clean energy is a business and is no longer just a venture or an, ad or an adventure. In fact, it is poised for a new wave of growth with bigger upside than in the past. Those four fundamentals are in many ways all that investors need to know. The focus will be to re-establish confidence in energy investing and let's face it, make money through this new upside opportunity. Of course, in the short term, the period of economic distress we're experiencing today is a natural and necessary development in the evolution of clean energy. It will help us shake out the weak and ineffective business models, the idealistic notions that don't deliver long-run economic value, the defunct products that have been developed, and the poorly capitalized and managed corporations. Whilst debt and equity markets are regaining their footing, I believe one of the biggest constraints holding us back in the short and medium term is the availability of finance finance and risk capital to scale up those winning technologies, not only to survive, but to continue to develop the next generation. And we can describe this issue more graphically through the lenses of two BP businesses we're developing today, US wind power and global solar. Starting with wind, the wind market is doubling every two years, albeit from a small base. In 2008, BP has an operating business producing 1,200 megawatts, which was created in three years. And we plan to build out that portfolio because we have 20,000 megawatts of pipeline developed through organic and acquisition activity. So why is BP doing this? Why invest in wind energy? Because wind energy and the generation of wind supported by government incentives is competitive with conventional energies. And wind can achieve this without a level carbon playing field. Today, the price of carbon is forecast to double to 35 euros a ton by 2012. And technology continues to drive down costs further. You can see in the hills in and around this area, Palm Springs, how we've moved the scale of wind turbines from the hundreds of kilowatt machines to the standard 1.5 megawatt turbines 
introduced improvements in technology and as a result improved efficiency and unit capital costs. We also see going forward deflation in materials coupled with a more balanced supply demand in equipment and components. The combination of policy support, a market for carbon, technology advances that drive down costs will create upside for wind. What we now need to do to achieve these are two further actions. The first, the financing means to scale up, and that means the return of project financiers and equity investors to share the significant scale up investment. Secondly, policy stability and flexibility. Extending the support for longer time frames than just one year at a time, and allowing the production tax credit to become refundable easing the burden for tax equity investors at a time when corporations are making less taxable profits. So turning to solar. The solar industry has been seeing dramatic growth with a range of 20 to 70 percent compound annual growth rate over the last 20 years. BP has invested for 30 years and has been riding the technology waves. We've developed a strong PV business and continue to improve on it year on year. We've also taken many risks and we've learned along the way. We were the first to build a thin film plant here in California and we were the first to shut it down. And we were an early entrant to the Indian market where we've been operating for over 20 years profitably. PV is today's core solar technology. It's benefited from an infusion of capital across the whole value chain. It has achieved significant expansion in scale and reduced cost per watt. With policy support, solar PV is grid competitive. As policy support naturally declines, it's offset by substantial cost and scale leverage. Expected raw material and equipment deflation will provide another significant boost to get us to grid parity without subsidies. 